Okay, so we're back at it. I've got a couple colors laid out on the palette already, but you can just ignore those because I'll, I'll real quickly flash the colors that I'm going to be using as I put them out. So like last time, I start with just a real quick black coat on the bottom after the card's already been base coated with permanent marker. And I do that mostly just to get a solid surface to paint behind that is darker. I find that that works better, makes it a little bit quicker and easier. There you can see the colors. That's Hansa Yellow Medium for anybody who really cares. And then this is the brush that I just flashed there real quick. It's just kind of a, a smaller lining brush. And I wanted to showcase this particular card because it requires that you do the whole card with this smaller brush. And I kind of just make my way through and a little bit as I go and I start with the darkest of colors involved in the original art and I paint into it a little bit and as I go you'll see I get a little bit lighter and lighter as I go. And for the most part I try and work quickly as to take advantage of using the same mixed pile there. You can see how I've, even when I introduce a new color like green I'll blend it a little bit onto my my paper. The paper absorbs a little bit of it and my my water mixed in with my paint will keep it a little bit wet as to make it mixable again on the paper. So that's how I do it. I don't think there's really any set way. I think if you watch traditional painters, whether acrylics or oils are being used or other altered art videos that you can find online, you're going to see a lot of the same thing. Some artists call it a dabble board, I think, where they are knocking extra paint off of their brush after they've mixed it on their palette. I kind of do both. And you can, you can see that with the black that I put around the bottom, those first little few dabbles over on the top of the screen. Those were from having too much black paint. And of course, you would want to avoid having too much paint on your brush because that's going to make or give the card a texture. And of course, you want it to be as smooth as possible. So mostly browns, mostly yellows, mostly greens after that first kind of mixture of, of brown and black. And I've said it on my altered art, like the intro videos, that almost in every single card, almost every single card, I use brown, black, and white. The The brown I use in this video is called Burnt Sienna. It's still brown. There's also a very common brown called Burnt Umber, and that is essentially just a darker brown. I make my own version of it by mixing my brown and black, and maybe a little bit of like really deep blue. That's how I get my dark, dark, dark brown. So as I move to my lighter colors, you can see I'm mostly in the greens and browns at this point, and I'm kind of doing those medium tones to kind of give it that illusion of a little bit more depth. And I'm creating, you can see kind of like those green kind of rough stripes. I'm painting those in as to blend my green stripes into the original green stripes because it mostly is the the lighter colors the yellows the greens the oranges that you're going to be able to notice the, uh, a lower quality blending job into the original art the browns the blacks the dark blues are not going to they're a little bit more forgiving than than the lighter colors so with the lighter colors I tend to do a lot more blending into the original art and you're going to see by the end of the tutorial that I take a lot of care to really get the highlights correct and all this time same brush of course i've cleaned it off in the water a, a few times that you can't see just to get the paint like out of all of the bristles sometimes you can't mix color properly if the rest of the brush is saturated in a different color so just keep that in mind i do have water right next to me and now we're getting into the blending on the bottom this was an auction piece of mine so i don't typically do paint all along all around the bottom of the text box. I do fade to black. Some people do commission altars like that. They're a little bit less labor intensive, less time intensive for me. People like the price point that they come in at. So I do them on commission quite frequently. I like the looks of them because it directs the eye up or it keeps the eye on the upper half of the card, which is kind of where the original art is. And this just being an extension of the regular art, it doesn't change any of how your eye moves when it sees the card. So there is some value to having that. And of course, when you're holding the card in your hand, like your seven card opening hand, for example, and you fan it out, you don't see the bottoms of the card anyways. So the added time and expense for a lot of people isn't there. Particularly now that cards come out of packs, like the, the full art or the showcase or the promo versions of cards come out of packs with the, the, the extended sideways art. People are very used to looking at cards 
in the style that this card was done in now. So it's a nice little compliment. And the dark browns and the dark blues do look nice with the fade to black on the on on this particular altar. Getting into the greens, the 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 lighter greens and the lighter yellow greens now to really paint in and blend those lighter colors into the art. This is my favorite part. This is the first time, kind of about at this point, that I thought that the altar looked really good. And then there's after this little bit of cleanup, there's just a little bit more, and then the finished product. The cleanup work, like I said last time, is usually the most time intensive if there is a lot of detail work where I wouldn't want to stifle my brush stroke and, and make it look like I'm trying to paint around the text box. So I just paint onto it or onto the name line and, and then I do the cleanup after. And I find that that gives me the, the best looking altar that I can create. And a little bit of cleanup with a straight edge. The knife was there just to score the paint. I don't actually cut into the cardboard or the cardstock when I use that knife, even though in fast motion it looks like I do. I'm not actually damaging the card. I'm just scoring that extra paint that's a, that's covering that top pin line. Now, this is the first time that I've switched brushes. This is actually a different brush. And this is where I get a little bit tighter, a little bit more precise on the, the top pin line. I added in some dark because I thought it was a little bit too light. I go back and forth a little bit between this paintbrush and toothpick to get that top name line just how I like it. I add some white there if I've discolored it at all, like just the, the, the native card stock. If it ever gets discolored, I can mix that pin line color. And that's it. That's the final product, the, the final detail, the highlights painted in. I hope everybody likes it. Please remember to share the video, like, subscribe to the channel for more Altered Art tutorials, and of course, all things Commander. Thanks, guys.